Welcome to Stamping with June featuring the framed occasion stamp set and leaf fall 3D embossing folder. I'm June Lukel, and not only have I been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 16 years, but I'm also a licensed K-12 art teacher with a minor in graphic design and illustration. I'm also so glad you stopped by to see what I have to show you today, particularly because I erased the first version of this, and this is now about the fourth time I've been trying to make this um, actually work. So, and it looks like I only have 36 minutes of, of memory, so I better keep it quick. All right, so first of all, we are going to be using the Framed Occasion Stamp Set in Leaf Fall. So there, these two. All right, and we're also gonna be using the Stamparatus for this particular card. So as I mentioned, this is about the fourth time I've been running through this, so I just wanna show you a couple things. First of all, um, this Stamparatus is very versatile. You can turn this around and you can, you got, it looks much more intimidating than it actually is, but it's really neat because you can adjust it. There's so many ways, so versatile. So first of all, um, to do, I, I started one and I just wanna show you, we're gonna be turning this 45 degrees at a time and it's gonna actually make a wreath. It's gonna be really neat. So this first one I've actually, put on already and it is reminding me a little bit of wheat uh, or it could be like I don't know seaweed or something um, so I am going to if you can see this I used the stamp pad I lifted it in there and I'm stamping this um, poly um, what's it called? polymer just <laughs> boy my brain's not working okay polymer stamps that attach to the plastic. All right, so I've already stamped this one. I'm going to turn this slightly. And this is a three and a half inch square, by the way, that, and then I've drawn those myself. So I'm gonna stamp that real quick. I'm going to press that down and then lift that up. And I know it didn't quite ink completely. If um, this had been held down with magnets like I normally do, you could ink it up and put it back down exactly in the same place as you were. It's so hard to re-stamp things by, you know, eye. So I, um, so the, but the Stampin' uh, Stamparatus really helps that. So anyway, I wanna make uh, this as a wreath and it's much easier to not have the magnets um, and just shift it around. It goes much, it goes pretty quick. When you can get it into a rhythm here and before you know it, you got a wreath. So you can see it's sort of, um, makes me think of straw. I know you got to have a little bit of imagination for that one, but here I'm almost halfway here. I think I am here halfway. Oops. That one got a little messy. All right. Better focus on, uh, inking those up completely. All right. And then this. All right, so there I have my wreath. Looks good, doesn't it? All right, so I'm gonna add two, uh, three different, four different stamps here. I'm done with the crushed curry. Whoop. Oh, come on, close up. All right, I'm gonna use soft succulent, all right? And I wanna use this kind of um, eucalyptus kind of thing. So I'm going to Let's see, give this a better idea of where I'm going. All right, so something like that. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, I'm simply gonna lay it on top. All right, look how easy that was to get that where I want it to be. All right, now I'm going to take the soft succulent ink pad and I'm going to stamp or ink, I should say. Now, if you're not careful, you could get it all over as I have already a little bit on the, the plastic, but it's, um, as long as you're careful, oops, make sure that. Now, 
Now I'm only going to do this um, four times because this is kind of a long one. And so it's going to kind of have this spiral kind of look. And it's always the, the one that looks like a square to me. But like I did the wreath, I did that eight times. So this is only going to be four. So it's, it depends on your element, I guess, right? Okay, almost done with that. That was quick, right? All right. So that, I've used stamp pads. Now the other way you can use this is with markers. All right, so here I'm going to take that off. I'm going to flip that around. All right, now um, I would like to put... I'm going to use these berries, all right? And I want them to be something like that right there. All right, so like I did before, actually like that. I'm going to, whoops, make sure it's where I want it. And then it's going to just pick it up. So here I have the little stamp on there. Now I'm going to take my Cajun Craze uh, stamp pad is having issues, so, um, I am going to use my marker and I'm using the brush end and I'm using the side of it. If you use the tip, you will quickly make it very fuzzy and very difficult to use on anything else to color in or anything else. So, um, I just, oops, I didn't do that in the camera view very well. So I'm just using the side of my marker and, and putting some ink there. So here, let me put this stamp that so this supposed to look like um, bittersweet maybe and this one I'm only going to do four too. Here let me do this more. Okay so we'll stamp that, turn it, all right and then here This is a great way to get more than one color on it. If you would like a multicolor kind of stamp, you can do that and you can use several different markers. Very handy technique, All right? But in this case, I, I just want it to be Cajun Craze, so. All right, so here we go. And the last one. Came along for the ride. All right. And the last thing I want to do is um, this little leaf. All right. I want it to kind of look like um, that's almost going to look like a ribbon going around, but it's just a, a dark green leaf. And I'm going to use this side and I'm going to flip it around. Although I very easily could take this out completely. And, um, whoops, almost dropped that one on the floor. All right, I can move that, so here we are. Um, oh, let's put this back. And, all right, so here we'll pick that up. All right, and get that ready. I'm going to use on this one, I'm going to use the darker version of that soft succulent. This is um, evening evergreen. All right, so this should go quickly, even though I'm going to do eight. It's just a very small one. All right, so there's one, and I'm going to turn it and make sure that this is back where it's supposed to be, and I'll get that arranged there. It's a good way to be, uh, to practice your amb ambidexterity because I'm doing this with my left hand, which is not my dominant hand. But it's good practice. We should always, you know, use uh, both sides of our brain or our bodies. And you never know when you're going to break your arm or, you know, for some reason not be able to use your your non-dominant hand, then you can, you'll be good at it by the time that kind of thing happens. So I once broke my wrist 
and it was a pain. Uh, so I speak from experience. Okay. And then, whoa, Ooh, that didn't, that worked out actually. All right. Almost. And then this one. Okay. So there I have a really pretty little wreath and it went pretty quick, as I said. I mean, it's not instant, of course, but things that are worth it sometimes take a little effort, a little time. All right. So I also, oh, I just realized I didn't get my stamp ready that says thankful we are friends because that's what's going to go on the inside. Um, this was meant to be in anticipation of Thanksgiving, but honestly, we can be thankful for friends all year long. So this isn't necessarily fall only, but obviously this is a fall wreath. So, okay, I'm going to, I could go get the pad out, but I got my marker out already. So I'm just going to use the side of my brush marker, brush end of marker, and just ink that up. All right. And then huff on it a little bit and then stamp that there. Okay. So now I have made that cute little frame. Now what I want to do is I'm going to uh, use the same colors and I'm going to build up a card. All right. So this is using that crushed curry and I should have scored that, but I did not ahead of time. So good news is I do have a bone folder and I can line that up real nice and kind of squish that down. I usually go from the middle to the out side and that's still a very nice crisp fold. All right. So now, um, I have already done this, but here is my embossing folder. And what I did was I took a uh, this is a quarter sheet of paper, but I took an extra eighth of an inch off. So when I, now that I fit it on here, there's a really tiny kind of frame of plain paper. And, but if I had gone right up to the edge, um, it gets a little awkward over here. So I just really like to make things look more uniform. I actually just take a little bit off the edge. Also, it tends to kind of deform the paper ever so slightly. Only like super picky people like me might notice that, but um, it would actually stretch out a little bit longer one way than the other. So this kind of helps eliminate that, which seems obvious to me, but maybe not everyone. Uh, but also this edge, I don't like how it looks when it's folded. So that's how I did it. I ran it through the Big Shot. I'm going to use the next... I'm going to have to run it through the Big Shot or the cut and embossing machine anyway for the next card. So I'm, I did this ahead of time. Oh wait, I want to do it this way. All right. Cause we always like this flow. I talk about this in my camps all the time. We read left to right, top to bottom, at least in America we do. Um, so I like to have your eye start over here sometimes or somewhat how, and then the words and other elements should kind of like flow. All right. So that's my graphic design class is one of the things that we learned in that. And of course, our whole purpose of having a card that's likable, um, we need all the tips we can get, right? So that's why I'm offering them. Okay. So I'm going to use stamp and seal and my silicone mat because I have already gotten my tabletop a little bit too sticky at times. The silicone is really nice because it, this adhesive does not stick to it. So if it does go out of bounds a little bit, it just kind of, you can kind of like wrap it up over the, instead of it sticking really badly. So I like to do the, all the edges when you have anything embossed like this. And now I'm going to lay that with a little tiny edge. All right. And now this looks like, whoops, see how nice that looks. All right. So that's just my background. And now, I mean, you could just do that. That still would look very nice, but I want to bring in all these other colors too. So 
right now this should help the curry color come out but I'm also going to have I'm using this evening evergreen for just have the leaves pop out a little bit and here is another frame using the Cajun craze so that should pull all of those out that is the purpose or that the purpose is the idea is balance all right and lots of studies show that is um, what people prefer generally Sometimes people don't know what they like, but they've figured out the things that are uh, harmonious, uh, balanced in some way, they, that's just better, right? So, all right, so I am putting that on there and I'm going to layer this again to the Cajun Craze. And that's gonna have so this Cajun Craze is a four inch square. The um, ever, Evening Evergreen is three and five eighths. If you are interested in making a card like this. All right, and then I'm also going to put this on top. Now, I often like to use dimensionals and make things really tall. Um, so this might be an opportunity if you wanted to pop that up a little bit, but I'm just gonna make mine flat. Now, notice I'm not putting this centered like this um, because that's, too um that's too expected i guess kind of one way to say it and also i want to show that this there's some weight to it this is when you frame things you generally want to have a little bit wider border at the bottom it sort of implies weight so all right i'm going to do it kind of like one third up here and two thirds down there if that makes sense and like that all right now to add to this, I'm actually, like lots of wreaths, have bows, right? So I have this beautiful um, shimmer ribbon, satin shimmer ribbon, which is the soft succulent. So I've got all those three different color card stocks, colors of cardstock, and so I wanted to have something soft succulent. So here I have it. Now the way I make bows is I make a little roll fold over like that, and I hold it with my left hand, my first finger and thumb and then I wrap this around let's see wrap it around my thumb still holding on to it and then I make another little um, fold and then tuck that in where my thumb is so I'll have to move my thumb a little bit as I go and then you can pull that now you're gonna have to adjust that a little bit sometimes you have to keep pulling it so that they are even and tight but you can make pretty much a perfect bow this way. And it, see how that works? All right, now, there. Okay, now obviously that looks weird. I wanna have more of a banner tail. So the way you do that, in case you didn't know this, you fold it in half like that and you can take your scissors and you can cut out like that oops let me cut a little bit more because that wasn't cut right in the first place all right so there is a little bit of a little banner tail here and then let me do the same thing over here okay cute little bow I like tight bows too. All right, now I want to stick this on and the best adhesive for that is the glue dot. All right, and the easiest way to do that is to find the adhesive dot and then press the back of whatever your, your 3D item is. And then you've got that on the back of your item and you can put that there at the bottom of your wreath. Okay, and there you have it. So there's my first card. Um, not a lot of time to show you my next one, so take a good luck here. All right, so my next card is using the same, um, the, well, not the same. It's actually not using framed occasions now that I'm looking at it, but um, we are using the, this, 
Actually, this is kind of a feature on this one. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna actually ink up one of the sides. So you can deboss and emboss, which is basically press in or pop out. Um, that's the difference of those two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I want the background, the sky to be light blue. All right, I'm gonna use this bashful, I'm sorry, balmy blue. All right, so I gotta figure out which side would be the sky, when this side would be the sky behind these leaves. All right, this is a really tight um, pad, here we go. Okay, so I don't wanna go too crazy with this, I just want a, a hint of blue. So I'm going to literally wipe this on the um, folder. All right. Ooh. And kind of get the top layer. I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to be, this is a light color anyway. So if you were using a darker color, it would be a little more obvious. And this one's being very sticky today. I don't know. All right, so here. And also make sure that when you're done with this, you clean it up really well, because I didn't do it as well as I could have, and I kind of made the next card that I did last time um, a little less than great. So, all right, there I've done that. Now, um, I'm going to actually spritz. This is watercolor paper. It's like 140 pound, um, Hot press maybe? No, cool press because it's not shiny. All right, so I'm going to spritz this off, um, not on the table, off on the carpet a little bit, but I'll show you. All right, so here I've, can you see the light? There, you can see that that's shiny. All right, so I'm gonna put that face down. Um, yeah, that's fine going to do that face down close that up all right and now I'm going to get my big shot which is the old style one and not in like the, the multi-purpose platform is could be in better shape it got dropped a few times by some customers so anyway oh I gotta put a plate on top all right, the nice thing is you don't need two plates though. So you only need one because this folder's pretty thick. All right, so I'm going to roll that through. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, goodness. All right, and, and by the way, you always put the, the um, bent part, the curved part, the, the hinge, that would be, there's the word. All right, my chair decided to be Make me the incredible shrinking women and only like, you know, real short. Okay, so here I have it. Here when we open it up, it's just got this light blue background. Isn't that neat? All right, so I'm gonna have to wash that embossing folder off, but at least for now, now I can start coloring those in. So what I wanna do, um, I experimented a lot I used a water painter, a water, yeah, a water painter, aqua painter, and it was a little bit hard to control, although it wasn't bad. It actually had a cool, you know, a really nice look, but you got to be decent at that to, uh, to keep it because these are popped up, if that makes sense. Plus a lot of the water was going down into the cracks, so you couldn't really see. It was a leaf for sure, but it was, in fact... I think I have it here. So here's the one I did. You see how it blends pretty well. I tried rubbing over it, but it ended up getting in the background. Um, but you know, they're blended really nice. However, it was a little bit hard to do. And then I tried, I was like, well, how about just markers, straight markers? And I, that didn't blend very well at all. However, it did make these nice white veins in between things. So I have a product that's right in the middle. It's the um, blender pen. And what it is is basically um, a colorless marker. All right. So it can pick up ink just like the aqua painter here, the water painter here. Um, so the same way, but it 
has a little more control like a marker. So what I do is I bounce the um, to get some of the ink off the pad and onto the lid and then I can just pick some of that up and I can apply it. Um, so here. And of course it's going to be more intense the, where I put the marker down first. All right, and then I want to like kind of scatter the yellow around if I'm going to do that. All right, so I'm going to put some here and I put some over there and not have like just one clump in one place. I want to have it here and there. Just, you know, like I did, I used the same colors and I just spread them out. All right, so. All right, I know I have a kind of limited amount of time for this. Um, because of the memory in my camera or my phone, I have to do something about that. So here I'm just um, doing here and there. Okay, now I'm sure the leaves wouldn't fall quite that perfectly, but we're making a card. It's not like real. Okay, so um, I can, of course, do more, but let's do the next. I started, by the way, with the lightest color. All right, and now I'm going to use pumpkin pie. And I didn't clean it in between, so not great, but all right. Let's see, I'm gonna do these kinda, what would these be? Um, Shag bark hickory, something like that. All right, and then So I'm going to leave, I don't know if you know what a oak leaf looks like, but oak leaves seem to like go straight to brown generally. So I'm going to leave some of those and then maples are often red. So I'm kind of being more picky than I probably need to be, but most people probably don't know their leaves like I do. Um, So, but you get the idea, right? Um, we got another one of those kind of leaves over here. But you can see how it has a decent amount of control, but it also blends. So it's kind of like the best of both, both worlds. And they come in a pack of three. Oh, I should have looked up the price. It's not too bad though, considering how much markers cost. So, um, I'm going to, they're useful. They've got two ends, so you really kind of have six markers. Um, and so, see, I've got them all scattered about. All right, so let me do some red. Might have to come back and do some more orange. All right, so let's see. Oh, that's right, I was going to do... The, um, the edges in orange a little bit more than let's be a solid red. back and do some orange too. All right, some maple leaves. Um, all right, how are we doing? Well, not much time left. So um, what I'm going to do, um, I wanted to show you two-step stamping because I also made um, used a couple other products here that are really cool. So I want to show you that real quick before I lose the video here. All right, so there I've demonstrated how to do that, okay? Um, and when you're done with whatever color you have, you can get a scrap piece of paper and just wipe it, okay? And roll it until it's clear. And then you know that's clean enough to put away. All right, so. What I want to do 
um, for this card. In fact, I could probably um, attach it. Remember, you want to put it, since it's curling up so much, I definitely want to make sure that I have adhesive close to the edges. Yep. All right, and I'm going to put this on a uh, crumb cake here. Now, um, when I did the do the brown, it's actually going to the brown leaves. That helps. Reason why I put this on this color is uh, partly because of that. But also, I have this natural ribbon that is really cool. And what I did was I cut it and then you can kind of unravel it on the edges like that. And then you can trim those off so it looks a little more rustic, I guess. All right, and then what I have that, I have that there. See how well that matches with the outside? So pretend all those leaves are done and that I'm actually attaching those. Um, I also have these very cool leaves. Where'd they go? There. These are leaf tags and it comes with these amber gems. And these are um, on clearance, or not clearance, but the last chance products right now. So they're actually discounted. So you might consider that. And I then I stamped Endlessly Grateful, which I thought was perfect for this. And then I also did a, a two-step stamping. So what that actually entailed was I used these two stamps and you start with the outline and then you add the um, so here I have I'm going to put this there and I'm going to put this on the other side so start with the outline okay you remember with these firm foam pads you do not need to smash them. You barely need to tap them. You'll get ink everywhere. And then it'll be a um, bigger mess. It'll be difficult to control. Okay. So here I've stamped with the lines first. And then since I got it on the same block. I'm just twisting, turning her over. I'm going to um, ink that up again. Remember gently. And then I can line that up right on top of those lines. And can see right through this really great advantage to polymer stamps and then I can stamp that okay so then if you look closely it is just slightly outlined with just a slightly darker color same color but you know so then I fussy cut these and here I have two oh come on pick it up Can't, it's like stuck all right here and then I'm gonna put these just kind of underneath whoops and then I could I could uh, use those glue dots like I did on that bow on the last one all right so how I have three one two three different items here on this non paper this is my focal point and you always well not always but this is a great rule of thumb if you have rule of thirds if you divided this into three this way and then you also had it in three this way, wherever they would cross. So here, 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 and here. If you put your focal point, which is the first thing that you look at, the main thing that you're looking at, in one of those crosshair type areas, you are bound to have a wonderful card. It's, it's kind of a no brainer. So really that's a great trick if you can do that is to put your focal point in any of these four places and you're good to go. All right, so here's my card. It is, here's a different version of it with a much darker background. I didn't like that as much, but it is all colored in. Um, so there it is. And then here is the other card that I did. All right, and um, so I've, again, I've used the framed occasions on the one card. And then I also used, oh, the other one that's needs a wash job now. I used this uh, leaf fall embossing folder for both of these in completely different ways, didn't I? All right, so here are the cards I demonstrated tonight, and hopefully you learned something and you're inspired to get creative yourself. So be sure to check out my website, youcanstamp.com, for the latest stamping news, money-saving promotions, and a link to the online store where you can purchase these items I've used here if you want. Although, uh, be 
well, I believe Framed Occasions is in the main catalog, so it'll be around for a while, but a lot of these items, uh, we don't keep them for very long because they're so great and they sell out and we also want new ones to come. So there's a, a, always a turnover of products. And I know, for example, these leaves are not going to be around for long. So, all right, uh, come back. Thank you for com um, coming and I hope you come back. Uh, on the fourth Monday of the month, which is going to be next Monday, we're going to do a mystery card. And then I always do the Facebook live broadcast twice a month on the first and third Tuesdays. And both of these are at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. Thanks again. And I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.